Man, I, I, some of you guys met me years ago. No, and I said, I heard you preach 28 years ago. I said, you still shake my hand? He said, yeah. I said, call the grace of God. <laughs> yeah, I said, I heard you preach when I was a student at Bob Jones University. That's been a long time. I've preached there several times. And, uh, what, what do you hear you coming? You're in my pocket again, right? Oh, I can't see. Is that it? You are now? Am I all? Can you hear me now? Whoa. You got the anointing. It out. Then the hole is left. Tell you how important you are. <laughs> really, <laughs> it, it really will. Our, our Lord took upon him the form of a servant, humbled himself. By the way, Jesus Christ is God's servant, not your servant. That's right. And you and I are His servants. And I'm sorry about that, fellas, all of you that have been to school and got your master's degree, your doctorate degree, your bachelor's degree. Eat that paper. You ain't no goat. <laughs> just, just get in there and serve the people. That's all. How many pastors do we have here? Okay. Do you, do you realize that you are God's servant? And you're to serve God's people? That'll save a lot of stress and heartache. I love the ministry, but I can't stand people. <laughs> I want to share with you this evening, and the preacher told me I had till one, what, 25, 30, whatever. Well, till I'm through, okay? Yeah. Right. He cheated me twice to take day already. The sin of ingratitude. The sin of ingratitude. Do you know God hates that? We don't even hardly say thank you anymore to anybody. People do things for us, we don't say thank you. If you love people, you ought to be able to say that. To your own family, your kids, your neighbors, really. They ought to know that. That we love the Lord and we love people. I love my people, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. I was sharing with Brother Flory there a little while ago how that the most neglected area in this area in America is the blacks and the Hispanics in the inner cities of America. I go up and down the East Coast. Thousands upon thousands of black people and Hispanics. No witness at all. No church. No nothing. We say that we love the Lord and we want to see Him come. When you stop to think about it, do we really want to do that? 
Do we really want him to come and find that we've not been obedient to evangelizing? We're the problem with the world, you know that? It's us. And not doing what he told us to do. And you know what? We, we even get real spiritual in our prayer. Lord, help me to obey you. Now, I'd never say that to my daddy. Pop, help me to obey you. He said, go in the room and wait. I'll be in a few minutes. I'm going to help you obey me. And I don't ask God to help me to obey. I say, Lord, I'm willing to do it. Enable me by your power to do it. And I can do it. People do exactly what they want to do, no more or no less. Turn with me in your Bible to Luke chapter 17. I like this Bible. It's new. And this brother, did you loan me this or give it to me? Which is Ain't nothing like that around your heart, is it? I say, thank you for giving me this, brother. I didn't give it to you. It's right in it either. I was going to put my name in it. <laughs> Luke chapter 17. Verse number 11. And he came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. I like that verse there. It came to pass. Thank God it didn't come to stay. Amen. You don't mean that, brother. And as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar. Now these men had a pearl that caused them to be together. God had laid down specific rules and regulations concerning leprosy. Only the priest, the high priest, could look at it and determine whether or not it was leprosy. There were certain regulations concerning it. And there were certain things that they would do according to the Levitical law that they were supposed to do in order to get rid of it. Our high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ, knows what it is, doesn't he? We call it a mistake, a shortcoming, a fault, but he calls sin, sin. And we were all together like this. And they, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Did you notice that? He didn't do anything. He just said, Go do it. And they did it. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed in simple obedience to the Word of God. That's how you and I are cleansed. Let me tell you, I share with you briefly concerning my testimony. I was saved in 1961. How many of you know who Louis Farrakhan is? Let's see your hand. That was me before I got saved. Now that tells you something. If God saved me, God will save Louis Farrakhan. He'll, he'll say Osama bin Laden. Well, that's what you were for you got saved. You just as bad. That's what me too. I was the only one. I'm the oldest boy in the family. I was the one most likely not to do anything. You talk about a literal black sheep in the family. That was me. I, I mean that. Man, I was as crooked as a dog's hind leg, really. I was lost. I realized that I was doomed, I was damned, I was on the way to hell without God, without Christ, without hope in the world. Now the Holy Spirit of God has convicted me of that I'd still be lost today. You know, doctors give wrong medication. Lawyers have been known to give wrong advice. Judges have been known to uh, uh, sentence the wrong man to court. But you can never give the wrong person the gospel to the wrong person. You know what? Never, never. Like I said, I carry tracks in my pocket. I got a favorite one here. It's called Thank You. I had it printed and got my name and address on the back of it. 
I got another one here that people don't like to take. It's called, has your casket arrived in town? <laughs> people don't like that one. I had to just, whoa. I said, well, wait a minute. Do you realize that caskets are not made for dead people? Caskets are made for living people. Every dead person's in their casket. When you come down the highway, there's a such and such a casket company bringing brand new empties in town. And yours and mine could have been in the last load. You don't know who it is. Yours, mine could be there today. You don't know that. See? So I ain't going. You don't have to worry about it. Six people usually carry you. You're going. You're going to die. But you don't know when. And I give it to them. Now, who would want to read that? And here's another one I got. I hear somebody say this, and they start to repent. I become father confessor. God's last name is not them. I hand that to them. They don't like it. This one says, thank you. When I'm in a restaurant, I leave this on the table, and I make it worth picking up. I put some money in it. I don't mean change. Only skunk gives a cent. Okay. Make it worth picking up. And they appreciate it. And it's the gospel. I thank them for their service. Then I tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can never give the gospel to the wrong person. I've given tracts and people years later write and write me and send a, a note and say, thank you for the tract. I got saved. Man, that's enough to make a whiskey pelion shout. You know that? Really? Somebody writes you and tells you, thank you for giving me that tract. I got saved. But here, these men, as they went, they were cleansed in obedience to the Word of God. Further, we see here, notice this. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. You know, a lot of times we're afraid to glorify God. We, we, we let the Charismatics and the Pentecostal steal our thunder. And I'm not talking about wildfire. I'm not talking about saying glory to God because somebody else said it. Because as the Spirit of God touches your heart, you can say glory to God, hallelujah. I scared the daylight. I scared the daylights out of a, out, a guy at our church that was a psychologist, a psychiatrist. And he's sitting there all dignified and everything, you know, whatever, a debonair, whatever. And the preacher got to preaching the Word of God. Now, he was waxing eloquent and waxing elephants. <laughs> <laughs> and I took off. Glory, hallelujah. Scared the daylights out of him. <coughs> he said to the preacher later, he said, you know what I'm saying? You've got a good church here. He said, but that black guy, so what's wrong with him? <laughs> he said, nothing wrong with him. He just gets like the Jim Earl does. He gets happy. Man, I just... Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! It scared some of the folk in our church. I think it scared the devil out of some of them. <laughs> it, it was deep. But we ought to glorify God. I, I mean that, brother. I'm not trying to get you to do it just because of me. But look, you can go out to the stupid bowl, spend four or $500, and you can't hear yourself free for that crowd. But when you come to the house of God and the Word of God is preached and the man of God, the choir is singing, God being glorified, and you sit there get be real spiritual, you go, oh, This man glorified God. And I don't believe he was quiet about it either. Let me tell you about that night that I got saved at home, I took off. My mule got out the stall. I was at home in my living room. And God saved me. I broke out in tears and praising God. My wife was asleep, scared the daylights out of her when she woke up. She said, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And she said, I think I know. And we both had a Baptocostal fit right there in the house. I was saved, man. I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. My sins were gone. I was set free. I was a new creature in Christ Jesus. And I wasn't ashamed to let anybody know. And I'm still not ashamed to let anybody know. A whole lot of folk don't visit me either. Especially on Sunday and Wednesday. Nobody visits me on Sundays and Wednesdays. Let me tell you, nobody visits me Monday, Tuesday. They don't visit. 
When you start to glorify God, they say, you're crazy. This old crazy world thinks we're crazy because we glorify God. But I, I can see that, speaking, humanly speaking. All you guys here, for a couple of days, leave your home, your ministries, and travel a mile and come here for somebody to shout at you. And then you pay for it. Now, man, tell me, is that smart or is that smart? Huh? And you know what? To show you how smart you are, you'll do it again next time if you can. <laughs> and try to get somebody else to come with you that hadn't been here. I know I'd love to. I'll get some other folks in our area to come. They glorify, this man glorified God. Why don't you see something about him? And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? This man could not answer for the nine. He could only answer for himself. Listen, I know a lot of times preachers get kind of discouraged when the folk don't show up on Sunday night and Wednesday night. You never need to fuss at them that are there. Go out and visit the one that don't show up and fuss at them. I was in a meeting, I forget where it was, and, and the preacher got up night after night, after we started, like on Sunday. Sunday morning they came, you know, Sunday night, and left Monday night. And he got up and fussed at the people for not coming. And I had to preach after he did that. So I got up and said, his preacher, I wish you'd do me a favor. I wish you wouldn't fuss at the people that are there. Go find the one that ain't there and fuss at them. I said, the ones that are there, you need to encourage them and thank God that they showed up to hear you or to hear me. Don't fuss at them. And don't tell them they look better going than they do coming. <laughs> Especially if you've got six and five of them are leaving. They look better coming than they do going. See? So he got up and he, 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 he repented. He told him, I'm sorry. Brother Earl said that to me and I, I shouldn't have done that. But you know what? The, the attitude of the meeting changed. It got better because of that. They came. They were encouraged. So, listen, there's enough trouble out there, enough problem with people, rather than come to the house of God and be rebuked and fussed at. I told a young fellow, listen, if you've got anything to say to a fellow, don't stand behind the lectern and fuss at Don't, don't, don't do that. Use this lectern as a, as a whipping post for somebody. Where are the nine? They are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. You know what? This stranger didn't have any claim to the Lord. None whatsoever. Probably the Samaritan and the Jews hated the Samaritan. They hated the term, like in John chapter 4. The Jews have no dealing with Samaritan and vice versa. But this man came back. They are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith have made thee whole. Now if you notice further, they were cleansed. But here, this man was made whole. This man was a Samaritan. He had no claim to Jesus. Not whatsoever. They were half-breeds. You have to go back in the book of Kings and see how they were mixed up and intermingled and intermarried and all that kind of stuff. But the other nine were Jews. This one man came back and gave glory to God. When's the last time you did that? Just got alone and gave God the glory. And thanked Him that it's well with your soul. I, I, I don't care about the circumstances. It doesn't make any difference about the circumstances. You're not under the circumstances. You're above the circumstances in Jesus Christ. And God allows a lot of things to come to me and you in our lives 
to show us about ourselves. Not about other people. To show us about ourselves. The Bible says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, they say, well, you, your kid was out there in the street and got killed, uh, rented by a truck. He said, Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. No, 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 no. He's not talking about that. Sure you grieve. Sure things happen to you. It breaks your heart. But I don't understand it all. But I know one thing, that God is still in control. He's sovereign. I don't understand it. Not to save my life. You don't either, so quit trying to figure it out. You save yourself a lot of wear and tear on your nervous system and giving God praise the Lord, thank you. I don't understand it, but I love you. I don't want to give you thanks. Thank you that I'm saved. Thank you that I got the Word of God. Thank you for my family. Thank, thank, thank you that I've got a home in heaven. Thank you for the person and work of the Holy Spirit in my life. Thank you for the people that you've given me to work with. Some of them might be as cantankerous as I am, but you're working anyway. He knows full well what he's doing in my life, in your life. When I got saved back in 1961, I wanted to know more about the Lord. I wanted to study the Word of God. And I had an attitude because of a simple reason. I, I go to a meeting such as this. And, and I was the only black guy, and I looked like a fly in a bowl of milk in that crowd. <laughs> and there were those that resented me being there. I know that. But I'm so glad that God stuck me behind my face. I don't have to look in it. And if you don't like it, you can look someplace else. And besides, you don't look all that good either. It ain't skin, it's sin. It ain't race, it's grace. The solution is not in the genes. The solution is in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God made us different. I don't want to be you, and I definitely don't want you to be me. I know my wife don't want you to be me. My kids don't either. I am what I am by the grace of God. And I give thanks to God that He saved me and called me and put me in the ministry and sent me out to preach the gospel to preach to men and women, boys and girls that they might know Him. That's what it's all about. A hundred years from now, it won't matter what color you were, what kind of job you had, what kind of school you went to, how many degrees you got. The only thing that's going to matter is what you did for Jesus Christ. That's the only thing. I thank God that He put me right where I am. Right in the middle of a white harvest field among black people and Hispanics in America. Aren't you glad that God put you where you are? Well, when's the last time you gave Him thanks and told Him? When's the last time you told Him? When's the last time you thanked Him that folk would invite you to a meeting like this to preach? When? Why? What is so special about me or special about you? Nothing. Nothing at all. On the way here, I asked myself, what in the world are you doing in California? What are you going out there for? And this is I've been here. I ask myself, why am I here? I'm like the little lightning bug that backed into the electric fan. I'm delighted to be here. <laughs> like the guy that had an old dog was a flea hound, a flea, flea blanket or whatever he called it. Old dog had one eye missing. Part of his tail was gone. It was just a mutt. But the owner loved him. And the guy told him, he said, you know one thing, man, next week they're having a dog show come in town. He said, what? He said, yeah. He said, I'm going to put my dog in it. He said, come on, man. <laughs> You're going to put that flea bag in that dog show? He said, I sure am. He said, but he can't win nothing. He said, I know that. He said, why are you going to put him in there? He said he might not be able to win anything, but look at the company he'll be in. <laughs> That's the way I feel. Look at the company I'm in. <laughs> I give thanks. Jesus gave thanks. He thanked his Father for what he'd done. He tells us to give thanks. The Bible is full of it. Giving thanks. But we very seldom ever preach about that, do we? 
We don't hear a whole lot of messages about prayer. We always complaining. We always complaining. We murmur, complain. If the sun shines, it sure is hot. If it rains, I wish it would quit. If the thermostat goes down, man, it sure is cold. Huh? If you have a blizzard or a tornado, some of those houses that tore down, they should have been torn down a long time ago. But they'll do so. They'll rebuild. You know what? I hear someone say, oh, Phil, I'm doing an interview on TV. One or two of them are say, thank God I'm still alive. They look, they look at ain't nothing left but shreds of a house or a trailer park or whatever. Of floods and all that stuff. Man, thank, thank God. So I lost one lady with Christ who lost everything. Another one said, I ain't lost my life. I'm still alive. I said, hey, that girl got it together, hadn't she? Give thanks. When's the last time you did that? It's a sin of ingratitude. It's a sin. You call it whatever you want to call it. We're not thankful. I thank God that I'm not in gross error when it comes to doctrine of the Bible. You know that? I, I thank God. I, I really do. What's so special about me back in those years that God spared me from going through all that religious stuff? I had a desire to know. I really did. I, when I saw in the community what I saw with the preachers and folk in churches, I said, hey, I want nothing to do with that. When Martin Luther King came along, God saved me and opened my eyes. I said, I don't want a thing in the world to do with that. I'm sorry he got killed the way he did. I'm sorry about that. But I'm benefiting by some of the things that he did. He never preached the gospel to anybody. Not the gospel that I know. That too, Brute. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Did you learn from him? <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I appreciate it. I, I need all the help I get. Be nice to old people, so when you get old, some young fella be nice to you. Okay? So what goes around comes around. <laughs> really. I'm sorry about that. But God allowed that to happen. It's a shame that it took something like that to open our eyes as God's people. God loved black people and white people and red and yellow. He loves all of us. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, when I started our church, from a Bible study, and we began to say, people said, we want a, we want a church. I said, okay. So I helped them organize it. And they said, now we want you to pass. I said, whoa, wait a minute. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Just a minute. I'll help you, but I didn't mean it like that. They said, no, we really want you to be our pastor. That's when the trouble started. The music was just like it is in the hymn. The natives were restless because we were singing black music. And I stood in the pulpit one Sunday morning. I said, I want to ask you a question. What color is music? I said, everybody get a hymn on. I don't care what color, what, what number it is. Open the book. Look at it. The black notes on top of the white page, and we're singing in the black. That's the way it's going to be. It's not going to be any different. I know what you want. You want to. 
wait a minute. Some of you good brethren from the middle independent Baptist, you go on that route with the contemporary junk. You don't need that. The church belongs in the world. And when the world comes into church, there's something wrong with the church. We don't need that. Try to entertain them. They got enough of that in the world without coming in the house of God to hear it. Keep the music straight. Sing it just like it's written in the hymnal, brother. We want to entertain them. We need swingers. Original swingers are monkeys, apes, and gorillas. We even got contemporary worship, whatever that is. Taking the name down off of the church building, Baptist, put worship center, community center, the shame of the name church. Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my community center. No, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of looking in the Word of God and see what it says. Let's do it according to God's Word. It works. You can't improve on what God does. Not to save your life. Give thanks. I'm grateful. I'm thankful. It's well with my soul. Even with my health problems. Some folks that I know say, Well, they're all high as hell. I say, I'm just dying to get out of this world. So are you. I thank God. You know what? I'm very limited in things that I can do. But I'm glad. I'm thankful. Because who knows what I would be doing if my health was like what I'd like for it to be. You know what? There's a blessing in that. I, gentlemen, I have to stop and rest. Jesus said to the disciples, Come ye apart and rest. Vance Habner said, Come ye apart before ye come apart. A lot of us need to do that. How, how, how many, how many of you men, you pastors, take a day off during the week? Let's see your hand. <clears throat> Let me repeat that. Maybe you didn't hear me. How many of you preachers, you pastors, take a day off during the week and rest? You're sinning against God. Are you listening? You need to take a day and work for honeydew. Don't even go to church. Stay away. Spend the time with your family. See, a lot of us use that as an excuse to get away from the responsibilities at home. That's really so good on the office, you know. No, 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 brother. Stay home. Mow the lawn. I can speak French. Mow the lawn. <laughs> Do something with your family. You don't have to have any money. Get in the car and go for a drive. Stop by that new place, Golden Arches. <laughs> well, spend some time with your family. Is it any wonder that you can cantankerous and evil and cross as a she bear that had a scub cub stolen from her? You don't rest. I have to. I, I can't go for so long. I thank God for teaching me that. And everything does not have to be done by you. Organize, deputize, and supervise. That's why God gave you, said they don't know how. Well, what are you there for? To teach them, according to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. For the work of the ministry, equipping the saints, that's your responsibility. Yeah, I got a bunch of dumb sheep, but look at the stupid shepherd. Don't bother me, you'll get upset with me. Get in line. It starts on the East Coast heading this way. <laughs> We're not there to please the people. We're there to please God. Yeah. And thank God for that crowd that you've got. You don't have to have that crowd. So, well, I wish God would give me what I deserve. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Sheep need a shepherd. Have you ever looked at the Scriptures concerning 
sheep. How dumb they are. Little boy was in school with a teacher in an arithmetic class. She's talking to him about sheep. The little boy, she said, if you had a hundred sheep and one jumped out of the pen, how many would you have left? The little boy said, none. She said, sit down. You know anything about sheep. He said, he know anything about arithmetic. He said, teacher, I may not know anything about arithmetic, but you sure don't know anything about sheep. Because if one jumps out, the rest of them are following and the Lord called us shepherds. No, sheep. We're the sheep of His pasture. If I was your wife, I'd never let you call me lambie pie. Or honey lamb. Mm-hmm. Sheep are dumb. You give thanks for the flock you got? Huh? So I wish they'd leave. Maybe they need to change shepherds. Where are the nine? They are not found. Gentlemen, I close with this note. The people that you help the most will hurt you the most. But you know, the hurt won't be half as bad if you realize who you're doing it for. They, they, they won't give you thanks. Maybe years later. But you ought to thank God for them. Even those that oppose you. We had a guy in the church, Melvin. Every time we come to do something, Melvin said it can't be done. And it was irritating. Every time we have a business meeting, talking about doing something, it can't be done. I changed my attitude toward Melvin. I thank the Lord for Melvin. I really did. I began to pray for him. Lord, do this for Melvin's sake. Show him that this is what you want us to do. All of a sudden, Melvin disappeared. Several weeks. I didn't know where he was, what happened to him. Somebody told me he was in the hospital. He never even let me know he was in the hospital. I found out where he was, and I went to see him. I said, Melvin, I didn't know you were in the hospital. I found out from somebody. Yeah, well, I didn't want to let you know, preacher. I said, uh, why are you here? He said, <laughs> I'm here having my tithe removed. I said, what? He said, Preacher, I wouldn't tithe. And I got upset with you because of that. And now God has put me in the hospital and removing my tithe. I said, Melvin, what kind of surgery did you have? He said, hemorrhoids. You think that had a pain in the end? <laughs> Melvin was lying flat of his back, but he was laying on a little... Rubber in the tube. He said, I can't even turn over. But he got well and came back to church. And the first thing he did, he gave a testimony and said, Folk, don't do like I did. God will remove your tithe. <laughs> and he told him what kind of operation he had. I would never tell anybody. <laughs> but you know what? He, he was giving thanks to God for that operation. Now, that's what it took for him to give thanks. Let me ask you something. What does it take for you to give thanks? Preacher, I thank you for letting me come. I really do. I thank the Lord for meeting you, brethren. Some of you walked by me like I wasn't there, but that's okay. I'm used to that. <laughs> Some of you stand back and look, watch, observe. I'm watching you too. That's the two-way street you are. Some of you look at me like you think it comes off. But it does in the bathtub, just like yours. You said, Doc, ring you get in your bathtub that goes down the drain. That ain't me, that's you. <laughs> Lord, I thank you.
Thank you, Lord, for loving me, saving me, put me in the ministry, picking me up, cleansed me when I failed you. Thank you for working on my old hellish, rebellious attitude. I thank you for that. Thank you for the hard places that teach me I don't particularly like them. Thank you for my infirmities of the flesh because I read that when I'm weak, then am I strong that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Thank you for this conference. Thank you for being here. Thank you for my family, my folk at the church. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you do, all you yet to do. In Jesus' name, amen.